So the, in 2011, Cedric and Gail Blamewise came along to the Tapuki Community Board with a bit of a concept for a walkway around Tapuki. So this is Cedric's original plan, uh, uh, which he's just drawn up by hand and it shows about a three kilometre loop around several reserves. Um, the community board was enthusiastic, got behind it, council uh, got enthusiastic about it and we developed a memorandum of understanding with the Western Bay District Council. Um, the main purpose of the agreement was that this project would be community led and that we would get support to facilitate the project from Western Bay but basically we would do it all ourselves. Uh, so what have we done? We called a meeting and formed a a uh, interest group. We had a lot more meetings with landowners, Western Bay Regional Council, NZTA, uh, and then we became an incorporated society. So this is the plan, the expanded plan that we put together. Uh, it takes in a lot more of the Waiari River and goes down to the Tapuki Wastewater Plant and uh, loops around and we also connect it up to Jubilee Park and uh, the stock route down to the community garden. So, so the majority of the uh, route is on council owned land. So this is an early site meeting with uh, the, the five guys there. Uh, that's the maize field down beside what is now Tapuki Highway. And uh, you can see there's quite a lot of work uh, needed to put a pathway through there. So Ken, Ken Kite, our deputy chairman, is good friends with Ken Edkins and he talked him into coming along and doing a bit of earthworks for us. So he spent about a week down there um, carving out the first trail. This is the area from the Old Tapuki Cemetery down to the Waiari Stream. And uh, there was a major issue here. The, the stormwater drain off the highway ran beside that power pole and uh, we had to sort of tidy it up there so that we could stay in a reasonable place when on the pathway. So, so we actually moved that drain, pushed it over a bit, and uh, we've actually increased the, improved the stormwater management off the highway, which is a big win-win because NZTA was quite concerned about that. Uh, it's now Western Bay's problem, of course. So Fulton Hogan, uh, we had an early talks with them about a year before they actually came and did anything for us, but. But they agreed that they would, um, they'd like to do something for the community after uh, completing the TEL project. So when they actually finished, it was actually within a week of them finishing, they came down and spent about a week with all their machinery and uh, finished off this pathway that Ken had started. So the foreman for Fulton Hogan was a guy called Robert Connell who lives in Tapuki and uh, he, he made sure that the uh, project was, or the construction was, as he said, gold-plated. Uh, Keith Campbell, the project manager for the TEL, or the uh, communication guy, put a conservative value of about 10,000. So one of our early working bees was planting some uh, flats. We got 250 donated by Forest and Bird, and we got another 700 cookie arnum, or mountain flax, donated by uh, Western Bay from their ecological fund. So this was one of our first uh, big working bees where we got a lot of people come along who we hadn't seen before so we were really pleased about that. Uh, unfortunately we haven't seen some of them since but I think they're still taking an interest. Now this is Gail Blamois, she obviously from Looking Glass Garden and, and uh, her and Cedric moved down to King Street and they actually bought this uh, plot of land behind her and, and she's turned it into a thing called Tinkerbell's Garden. She's planted over 60,000 daffodils down there. So this is in August, so all the daffodils were out. So another thing we decided to do was try and get some other community groups involved. So we got Tapuki Rotary, went and sold them on the idea and they came down, they agreed to do this section from State Highway 2 to the Firth Concrete. And um, so they started that in March and they boxed it up. They've had a couple of hiccups, so we're still waiting for that to be completed. Uh, this um, is the area below the old Tapuki Cemetery. It just used to be a grazing block. The council had a return of $300 a year on it. And um, so we, uh, we always liked the idea of going through the middle of this. Uh, at the time, the guy that was grazing it said he didn't really like that idea. Rather, we went around the side, but council agreed with us and we ended up with this. And, uh, and when we actually got up there and looked down at this site, we thought, well, there's potential to do a lot more with this site. So we uh, come up with this idea of putting a pond and, and sort of wetlands and, and a whole lot of plantings in there. 
a local artist called Jim Duncan uh, come and saw us and said what can I do to help so we come up with that concept and then uh, we got 10,300 from the uh, Western Bay Community Matching Fund and that enabled us to get Crowley excavators in to excavate the pond and contour it and landscape it. He's, he's an expert in wetlands uh, creations so that didn't take him very long at all so we were very grateful. Uh, we were wondering whether the water would stay in there but it's filled up uh, within a few weeks and uh, the, uh, it seems to hold quite nicely. So we planted about 450 trees and plants around there. Um, that was all part of the matching fund uh, contribution and now it's really starting to take shape down there. So another part of the walkway is around the typically wastewater treatment plant and the dog pound. There's the map up there of where we go. So this is a bit of a challenging area because it's really boggy in the winter time and the only reasonable way to, to fix that is to build a boardwalk. Um, another concept from Jim Duncan and uh, we actually got $69,000 from Tech to go towards this project which includes this boardwalk and another 100 metre stretch uh, not far from there. So this is only like last week we got Kim Lacey who ran the piles for us, Peter Booman who is a recent um, uh, entrant to Tapuki and he was building boardwalks down in Taupo and he's come along, he's, he's project manager. So we wanted to put a curve in there to make it nice and sort of interesting and we're going to do some planting between the fence and the boardwalk. Um, so it's, um, it, this is this photo was taken a couple of days ago so it's, it's coming together quite quickly and uh, we think that we'll actually uh, um, finish the project within budget. We were a bit concerned initially because when Peter first looked at it, well, when I first asked him how much do you think it's going to cost, he said, oh, I mean, how long is it going to take you to build this? He said, oh, we're up to a few weeks. And, and then once we got to the nitty gritty, he said, oh, I think it might take a bit longer. So, but anyway, looks like we're doing it faster than he thought. So that's about it. Uh, that's the end of my presentation. Um, so I'm sort of... Could just supposed to be 20 slides in 20 seconds each, but I sort of changed the speed of some of those. But I've got a couple more I'd just like to quickly tell you about. I wasn't actually planning to do this, but I'll do it anyway. Steve, can you um, flick those? So there's the plan again. Um, I'd just like to ask if you know, anyone's got any questions you'd like to ask, I can quickly answer before we move on to the next one. There appears to be none. Question, can you completion? Date for completion. Uh, that's a good question. We're not 100% sure, but once we finish these boardwalks, then uh, we're a lot closer than we have been for a long time. So this has been the sticking point. The uh, the boardwalks are up right at the very top there, behind the one the plant, and the one at 90 degrees to the railway line. That's when the two boardwalks are going. Once they're completed, we can pretty much open it up. So we're probably looking, hopefully, possibly before Christmas or mid-January. Um, Steve, can you flick to the next one? Taking a few liberties here. So this is, once you get up off the boardwalk and up on the stock bank, this is between the wastewater treatment plant and the wire. So this is uh, what, what, the, what it's going to be like walking down there. So we think it's a really attractive um, high amenity area. And just the last one. Eventually, we'd like to connect our little walkway down to the TEL and and Mac Two, and that would go through. Uh, this is the lower Kaituna wetlands, and there is a potential to, um, um, in the long term, to connect this up from to to Puki. So uh, that's sort of a long term plan. We there's a few sticking points with landowners, but we'd like to be able to do it down the stock bank beside the Kaituna, so that's a long-term vision. And I think there might be one more. And that's just down to the cut, so, so that's the vision. Uh, connect to Papamara and Makatu and Pine Road to the great cycleways they've got out there. So, thank you very much.